Hello and welcome to Physician Perspectives. This is Dr. Jeetan Bendor. The presentation is on assessment of muscle function in a physician's clinic. Poor musculoskeletal health is one of the greatest causes of contemporary ill health in our population. And one in six of our adult population suffers from the condition or a poor musculoskeletal condition. And it causes great morbidity because musculoskeletal issues are the greatest cause of work sickness absence and a primary cause of disability and a loss of independence during adulthood. So this is critical. And many of us doctors do see a lot of patients in our clinics who may need a lot of assistance regarding their musculoskeletal issues. So it is important, therefore, to assess these patients that we suspect having a challenge when it comes to younger age and definitely people who are older who need assistance from the medical side. There are several papers on sarcopenia assessment and management, but here's one which I found very interesting. This is published in the uh, BMC uh, Geriatrics Journal. And uh, these are a group of uh, uh, working, uh, working group rather of the European Society of Clinical and Economic Aspects of Osteoporosis and Osteoarthritis. And they have identified through reviewed papers the, um, some of the red flags that we look out for from the clinician's observation points of view, general weakness of the subject, visual identification of loss of muscle mass, low walking speed from the subject's presenting features, loss of weight, loss of muscle strength in arms or legs, general weakness, fatigue, falls, mobility impairment, loss of energy, difficulty in activities or activities of daily life, very important, as well as the clinician's assessment with nutrition, body weight and physical activity. These are quite good. Now, I will present in the next slide uh, Another paper, which I will take through, uh, take you through the to the end of the presentation, published by the same group. So here's the paper: assessment of muscle function and physical performance in daily clinical practice, published in 2019. And the same group as I pre as mentioned earlier, uh, speak about speaks about the given large number of approaches to measure muscle function and physical performance. Clinicians often struggle to choose a tool that is appropriate and validated for the population of older people they deal with. So this paper actually uh, goes through some of that, uh, some of those challenges and the assessment tools that we can use. Very interesting, and it can be used for younger people, not necessarily for older people only. It is first important to clarify the terms muscle function and physical performance. So muscle function first is underlined by three concepts. Concept of muscle strength, muscle power and muscle endurance. So muscle strength refers to the amount of force a muscle can produce with a single maximal effort. Muscle strength has to be differentiated from muscle power, which is defined by the ability to exert a maximal force in as short a time as possible, as in accelerating, jumping and throwing implements. And muscle endurance is defined as the ability of muscles to exert force against resistance over a sustained period of time as in as in doing some biceps curls or or, or or similar exercises repeatedly over a period of time now all three are important muscle strength muscle power and muscle endurance for everyday living the group defined physical performance as an objectively measured whole body function related with mobility. So it's important to look at the activities of daily living like climbing upstairs or buttoning your shirt. And physical performance goes beyond muscle, muscle function as it involves many other organs and systems such as bone balance and other neurological inputs. So you need to look at the individual as a whole. So in order to make this paper easy to consult for 
clinicians, the authors chose to focus on tests that clinicians are susceptible to use in their daily practice, instead of presenting a review of all available tests in the literature. So for measurement of muscle function, we're looking at muscle strength and muscle power. Grip strength is a part of muscle strength. Measurement of physical performance would be gait speed test, under which you have short walk measure of usual gait speed, chair stand test, short physical performance battery, and timed get up and go test. For muscle strength, grip strength is a measure of choice for the assessment of overall muscle strength and grip strength is the most widely used method of uh, measurement of muscle strength. Grip strength is easily measured by using a dynamometer which is available in the market for physicians to buy and they're not as expensive as one uh, uh, you know, expects them to be. So here is a reference range recommended by the group. We know that low grip strength is consistently associated with poor outcomes, care dependence, falls, fracture and mortality. So for muscle power, leg power has been shown to be highly correlated with physical performance tests and studies have found that muscle power is a better predictor of mortality compared to muscle strength. Muscle power can be assessed across a range of muscle groups but most often the leg press and knee extension exercises are used to measure muscle power. Maximal strength is quantified through something called as 1RM or 1 repetition maximum resistance. Currently a reference range for the different measures of muscle power is not available. So for the measurement of physical performance a gait speed test is done two main types, uh, one a long distance and a short distance. The short walk measures um, about 4 meters and it is one of the most commonly used short walk tests validated for older adults. And here are the reference ranges that are recommended by the group. The 30 second chair stand test is one of the most important physical performance clinical tests because it measures low body power, balance and endurance. In Hong Kong, that stands at about 10.1 stands per 30 seconds and in the US, 13 stands. The short physical performance battery is the most widely used uh, group of tests, which involves balance tests, walking speed tests and repeated chair stands. We know that a very low SPPB test, 0 to 6 points, has been shown to be associated with increased risk of death. The timed get up and go test is a physical performance measure that has been mainly used to assess gait and dynamic balance. A tug score of 14 seconds is sensitive and specific for identifying older individuals who are at risk of falls. Thank you for watching.